thanks for bearing with us. Uh, so the first question uh, for the people who are who are attending this event for the first time is what is Dev Day? Uh, so Dev Day is a tech community event. It's an informal event, and it is platform for all the developers or people in the developer community uh, from different backgrounds come together, discuss about uh, technology, ideas, perspectives, and sh share with each other. So one request is if you can just silent your phone, no? because then the you know, the speakers start to go home to disturb you. Yeah. So that is what Dev Day is about. And Dev Day has been conducted since last uh, several years, and we have been doing it across different cities. We have been doing it in Pune, uh, Chennai, and Bangalore. And this is the first time that we are starting here in uh, Hyderabad. Uh, so let's take a moment and celebrate that this occasion that we are starting with Dev Day Hyderabad. Let's do it with a warm applause. Yes, thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, so coming back to today's event. So today's event is about chat GPT and large language models, which has taken world by storm uh, by its application. And so it's taken world by storm with all its applications. And uh, with we have uh, Dr. Ravindra Babu, uh, who is global data science head at Sahaj. And at the same time, uh, he was with Mintra working as data science head over there. And he has also worked with ISRO as a scientist. And no better person than him to help us guide us through this talk and read this uh, discussion. Uh, one uh, last thing is, if you have any questions at any point of time, please raise your hands and ask them. We want this session to be uh, collaborative. So don't feel uh, or don't be afraid to ask questions. As someone has rightly said, uh, questions are never stupid, uh, answers are. Uh, so without further, uh, further ado, I will uh, hand over the stage to Dr. Ravindra Babu to take this talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Priya, uh, for the kind introduction and setting the tone for the talk. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this talk is about uh, at a concept level, and uh, we have seen in the last uh, at least since January, December onwards. Suddenly, we are, it's taken by you know is kind of a storm that uh, we are seeing a lot of chat GPT applications. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, before really getting there. Uh, I will go through uh, like what is machine learning. Slowly, I'll build the concepts till uh, uh, whatever large language models. Then, uh, then we will see what are the concerns, what are the advantages, what we should do. Talk about that. And I have, we have also tried out. My team also tried out uh, some experiments with that. I have some screenshots. If the time permits, we'll go towards the end and we'll talk about the, those experiments what we had done, the capabilities of uh, chatbot. But predominantly, it's a concept level, and feel free to stop me anywhere uh, to the extent of I know, and I'll try to answer. Uh, otherwise, I can direct you to the uh, right place. Then, I have also towards the end, I have also talked about uh, some uh, game references, uh, publications, blogs, and there are YouTube links. I have not, I'll talk about them. I have not given the links there. So, these are all things. And if you want to understand further, you want to read up more, there are the resources there. So uh, to set the context, like um, uh, you can. So this is the uh, the title, like uh, recent developments in AI, and uh, and the other thing, the very important thing that comes up to everyone's mind, and at least some of you uh, who are in data science space, space like uh, there are questions like, are you still relevant? So now that ChatGPT has solved all your problems, and what else you are going to do? Are have you thought about how do you exploit and you know uh, how do you align uh, that kind of thing? That also I'm going to address. So if not that, I hope I'll have enough time towards uh, spending on that. It's not that it has taken away the data science uh, uh, space completely, and there are many and there are many clients who come with very vague problems, and they we need to still make out make sense of them and solve them. And in a in a broad sense. Uh, foundational models which help develop these uh, models like uh, large language models and multi-modal large language models that we call it. The modality is in terms of text, images, computer vision, and like videos and all that, you know, different speech. So different modalities, how do they integrate to solve 
text based solutions for that like you can instruct to generate an image kind of thing so we'll talk about that in little more detail feel free to stop me anywhere uh, broadly this is the flow uh, like i'll set the context initially then what is generative ai what are large language models and what are the foundation models and machine learning landscape uh, problem landscape in, in the industry what kind of problems day in and day out you get and how do you attack them and how do you solve them and how these foundational models are these large language models are of use or not of use both of that that is right towards the end we'll uh, get back to the entire thing we discussed so this is to start with uh, the, in, the, in terms of setting the context I'll talk, i'm going to talk about what is machine learning modeling what is machine learning so i'll start from there then the three Vs of big data, then uh, different nature of data, variety of data, what kind of variety can be there, and what are foundational models, what is generative AI. Okay. Then within generative AI, I'll go deeper into multimodal uh, DAL, MODL, multimodal uh, models, and how do they, how do we really solve them? Uh, just before that, let me talk about what is a model. Anytime a yeah, model is always a simpler representation of complex world the real world is much more complex you try to uh, 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 kind of uh, put it in a simpler terms where you can tackle them you will be able to predict the next event or you'll be able to understand for example it, as simple as a traffic problem will you be able to predict that um, a, in the next one week the traffic is going to be this way so that the the traffic police can will be able to take something or will you be able to this predict a stock price and uh, most of the times we generate when we develop a model we take the help of say physics certain things like for example even Kepler's laws newton's laws are also kind of a representation of real complex world of the space so i but will it 100 percent represent the entire thing that is happening it may not but predominantly it does so that is sufficient enough to be able to launch uh, satellites track satellites and get best out of the satellites kind of thing so sometimes you depend on the physics. When you depend on empirical data, that observation data, no? the data that we collect, and based on that, you try to build some models and make some decisions based on that. We make some business decisions for business advantage. Then that's where the machine learning modeling will come into picture. So you depend on the empirical data to build some models to make inferences for the business advantage. Now, well, let us go to machine learning. So in machine learning, the basic uh, concept is it starts with patterns. A pattern can be defined as anything opposite to chaos. So everything, you know, that in this hall, or each one of you, face images, spectacles, mm -hmm. laptop, and maybe watch or uh, mobile, each is a pattern. And these patterns and the object of pattern recognition is classification. Will you be able to classify one pattern over the other? When you get set of patterns, imagine you have a conveyor belt. On the conveyor belt, you get a, a kind of lot of fish. You know? Like there are two fish types. There are two different fishes as they represent here. And so there are two kinds of fish. Imagine on conveyor belt, these two fish keep coming. And will you be able to classify that the next fish that is going to come is a fish type A or fish type B? Okay. This is kind of classification problem. So we talk about patterns. So each of those things that I have shown here are patterns. Like I gave a lot of examples of patterns. So the fish, uh, those two fish and the bottles, water bottles of two different brands, they're all patterns. Now we have to somehow characterize these patterns. For characterizing the uh, One second, sorry. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, to characterize but you need to make measurements. So the measurements that you are seeing for each fish, you know, the length of fish, width of fish, the fin length, and the tail length, tail width. So likewise, on reflectivity of a fish. Right? So each, each has its own color and the amount of reflectivity, all these things characterize a fish well, and it will help you to classify whether it is belonging to type A or type B. Similarly, on water bottles, you can see that uh, uh, oh, sorry. 
<laughs> Sorry for that. Okay. So likewise, you can see the measurements on the bottles. Here, what you are doing is there are, uh, you know, if you carefully see the bottle, uh, they're all designed in such a way that there has to be some place where you have to hold the bottle and take the water. In. So if you look in a mathematical uh, way of representing, there are multiple cylinders in the bottle. And you can see that uh, this is one, this is one cylinder, cylinder two, cylinder three. There is a conicoid, con cone. There is angle of cone. There is again another uh, kind of a, a rectangle, again, maybe another cylinder. So each of them can be represented as width, length, again, width, length, or diameter length, diameter, uh, this length, and this length, this, this slant length and the angle, and again, diameter and height. So in a way, you have, you have transformed the real problem of bottle into something like 10 to 12 parameters. Are 12 measurements, those 12 measurements are 12 features. Okay. Now, these features characterize the bottle, but it doesn't, it, in no way, it represents a bottle. When you look at bland 12 numbers, that is sufficient for the algorithm to understand and classify that is belonging to pattern A, pattern B, but this is called abstraction. You are abstracting a particular problem in a way that is amenable to a computer. Okay. So, these are features. Likewise, now the next important concept in uh, machine learning model is like these are labels so you need to have labeled data if you want to go for uh, what is called classification supervised learning so these labels are like fish type one name there is a formal name i i think that complication is not necessary type, you can call it as type one type two and labels different two different brand brand one brand two. and in label labels are given by a an expert or a or a teacher so in this case it may be a fisherman to be able to say that a fish is of type A type A, fisherman is the teacher, he is the expert, he understands the game. So this is these are labels. Once these patterns, features, labels are available, you can build algorithms to uh, to build uh, to uh, you know uh, to be able to classify an X pattern that is going to come is of the, this type one or type two. So here again the concepts of training, validation, test data comes. So you have algorithm, different algorithms. I, I have given the bottom like care nearest neighbor classifier, previous classifiers, like patient tree, random forest. Uh, I'll not go deeper into it. If you have any question, I can broadly explain what it is. But that is not the intent actually. I mean, I just want to give you a feel that it's not unknown. At the, and by the time you come to chart GPT, oh, this is all that is. So that's the kind of feeling I want in all of you. That is the idea. I'm building all these concepts. So. Then logistic regression, new ways, support working machine, neural network ways. These are all different models that you build. You have training data. The training data is you have a lot of observations that of the features that you have got. And for pattern one and pattern two, you have enough data, maybe 10,000 patterns, 1,000 patterns. So out of them, 80% or 60%, you keep it for training to understand the parameters of that particular model and validate, try it out a validation data set and ensure that that you know it is able to classify. I mean, you have divided the entire data set into three parts: training data, validation data, test data set. Train it on training data, try test it out on validation data, see that it is doing well. When you are confident that the model is able to predict well, then we'll get into uh, the test data, declare that this model has these kind of activities. Okay. And the other model, this is what so far what we have discussed in supervised learning. Okay, because there are labels that are required and the features and uh, um, the patterns still remain, the concepts still remain there for the other approaches. The other thing is about unsupervised learning. That are, we also call as um, clustering in a way. So imagine, again, let us go to conveyor belt. There is a fisherman has gone to sea and he has caught a lot of fish and he has put it on a conveyor belt. More likely that you can't enumerate all possible fish types and also fish age also will be different. Uh, irrespective of when the fish age is different, the sizes of the fish is different. The same size, same fish that we have seen earlier, the sizes will be different. So possibly in, in terms of ratio sense, it will still make sense. Like length and width ratio, if you see a particular uh, uh, type of fish will still maintain irrespective of its age. Now, can you group the fish uh, in a way that uh, they're all in a group one, group two, group three, group four, group five kind of a thing based on these features? So that grouping by certain similarity characteristics is called unsupervised. So you don't have any feature. It's impossible at times to 
label uh, most of the times. You won't be able to label the data. You cannot get a labeler or an annotator to go and ask them to uh, to label the data. It's practically impossible. Then we have, have other approaches like semi supervised layer. Then comes some semi supervised layer. That means here you only have some data which is labeled. Most of the data is unlabeled. Then can you build uh, a simpler model and try to predict, which is may not be very accurate, but decently good enough for the rest of the unsupervised uh, data, you label them based on the smaller model. So there are many approaches. There is one approach and simply uh, simplifying the concept. There are many ways of doing semi supervised data. Now, uh, the third thing, uh, next thing is, of course, reinforcement learning I didn't cover here. Like, again, reinforcement learning is a Again, is a kind of a, another type of learning, which is also finding even in even in chat GPT uh, that we're going to talk later about later. There is a reinforcement learning based human feed, human feedback based reinforcement learning. So it is again like you you get you learn from the environment. Like the classic example that they say, supposing you, here so far we have discussing that you have patterns, you have to learn from the behavior of the patterns and try to predict the unseen thing. But imagine. When all of us learned cycle at some point, uh, we were all first time learners. You know, it is the first day of learning the cycle. You, you only do it by trial and error. You, you don't have so many patterns of uh, like how do you climb onto the cycle? No, you are, some of you, some of us maybe pedal from the side. You know, you, so you, when you take your father's cycle, it's very tall and you have several friends and then climbed up. In this process, you don't have too much of training data. You learn it by experience. Okay, that's broad concept of learning. I not go deeper. Then comes this self-supervised learning, and and this is the the this is the thing that is almost like the bloodline in, in most of the models that we have we are seeing uh, uh, so far. This again, maybe I have put it for easy reference. Like it is a machine learning process where the model trains itself uh, to learn one part of the input and from another part. You know, but one part is learned from another part, kind of thing. And it's also uh, known as a predictive or pretext learning. And it also helps in generating uh, auto generation of labels. So it is learning from the data to be able to kind of labeling, but not labeling, but you are able to find some patterns in the data. But that is the, uh, as I said, is a lifeline in all these large language models, generative models. There's those type of things that is there in both computer vision and text, you know, all types of data that, that is very prevalent in most of the models that we. We we that we based on today's discussion. I have one question yeah. on the self supervised. So yeah. how do you play? I mean, how can you say that the model is successful? I mean, the, uh, yeah. What the benchmarking we have Yeah, typically there are uh, some loss functions based on that. They 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 are called contrast loss functions. There are specific loss functions that it exploits to say that yes, it is able to learn. learn it. And they are they are distinct. They are distinctly different from the other last one. Mm -hmm. Then comes the uh, yeah deep neural networks are also called deep learning. Uh, deep learning in both in um, uh, figurative and uh, literate, literal sense. Right. So let me uh, yeah, again that that's again this a lifeline. All the models now. Uh, our deep learning models, most of the models are done that way. And uh, and here, most of them also like reuse uh, what is called foundation model. We'll talk more about that. And nowadays, uh, originally A is about logic and then predicates and you know, those, those type of models initially in the early days. Now, deep neural networks are deep learning has become synonymous with AI. Whenever people talk about AI, it's kind of deep neural network. There can be arguments for and against, but that's how it is. And this is uh, again in computer science, uh, um, in both optimization and also machine learning, we get uh, uh, motivated by the real world process. For example, in this case, we are uh, motivated by the functioning of brain. And uh, it is no way representative of entire uh, function of the brain. No? And the idea is not to mimic the brain in completely, but you get motivated by certain ways the brain learns or uh, the way the eye sees, the cortex. Does it see a single point when I, when I look at you or I look at around, around some place? No? There, is a, there is a matrix of 
pixels that you look at, but it's not like a single point and no stick. I don't look at one. You look at it. Those are type of the uh, there are there are the motivations to be to build models there. There are other models like there is uh, another very celebrated method called stable diffusion. Again, the diffusion itself is influenced by uh, thermodynamics, and uh, genetic algorithms is uh, influenced by uh, uh, the uh, survival of the fittest Darwinian theory. So again, each of those methods, they are motivated, they are motivated but they don't completely replicate like how the apes are made. Kind of, like a survival of fittest. There is there is no there you know there is a natural selection. And there is a, a crossover, the new offsprings from get from the parent uh, chromosomes. That's how it was like mutation. Those concepts will remain, but not exact replication, but there is good enough to solve plain problems. Similarly, in deep neural networks, you get motivated by the functioning of brain. The first image first thing is talking is talk about how this and uh, there are these are all typical cell structure, like cell body, cell nucleus dendrites, axons. So even when a particular event has to happen, there has to be, the cell gets activated. No? There are chemical, uh, there is a release of chemicals and they connect to each other and they, they try to do work in a unison. So I'll leave it at this. So that gets, that motivates you to solve problems, uh, you know, based on your network. There is one such, in, 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 there are three inputs and there is a, uh, like a, uh, Linear combination, summary, summation of those inputs along with the weights, then pass through a function, and ultimately it gives certain labels. This is a little more detailed explanation of this. There are two input layers. There is one hidden layer, one output layer, and these are all two input layers. Could be uh, maybe supposing you are trying to classify fish versus bottle, water bottle. The fish has length and breadth. Supposing those the length and breadth are the only two inputs, and based on the length and breadth. And can you uh, connect a network? The hidden layer has uh, has no physical relevance, but is a hidden kind of thing. Based on this, and these are all connections. These are all the, the connections that you see have appropriate weights. These connections are weighted. I mean, those weights are initially initially is random weights, small random weights. You learn uh, through back propagation in some way to try to learn and get those weights. Ultimately, you'll be able to classify that particular thing as the other fish or a water bottle. And uh, these are some of the image courtesy the, the images I have taken from here. And uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, then these, there are some blocks. I mean, like I have given a mix of research papers and blocks for easy understanding. Somebody or someone, some of you who want to go deeper, you can go with uh, books and uh, research papers. Somebody who wants to get a feel, you can go with the yeah. blocks as well. The new neural network is like this. Now imagine uh, I have taken an image of a person. Uh, image is like uh, maybe 1000 by 1000 pixels. So 1000, that means 10 to, 10 to the power of 6. So 10 to the power of 6 inputs are here. The D is equal to 10 to the power of 6. So there are so many input nodes, input uh, values, and input nodes. Hidden layer 1, hidden layer 2, and so many happening like this, and hidden layer 2. Ultimately, possibly, you are trying to predict that. Okay. This is kind of a deep neural network. There are so many variants, so many variants. and. Uh, this talk is uh, no way uh, sufficient to uh, cover all that. There are so this is broadly this is deep neural network, and then comes the uh, big data that uh, there was a, a good uh, uh, thing, and there is a lot of technologies based on that have happened in the last maybe decade or more. And typically, it talks about volume, velocity, and variety. Uh, the massive data sets that you know day in and day out, whether you are traveling on the road, uh, you you are now if you have much more sophisticated cars, it's monitoring you, your driving patterns, where are you passing through, and how many times you have applied brake, and is there a sudden uh, acceleration? You no, know, like that. You no, know, everything that you do, uh, like how many, how long you walked during the walk, did you raise uh, your heartbeat or lower the heartbeat? And likewise, you know, every moment uh, we are getting monitored, a lot of data is getting collected. So that is a voluminous data. Even if you talk about health data alone, it's voluminous data. So the big data talks about that volume, velocity, and uh, velocity is the speed at which it is going to come. And the variety, different types of data. Variety, I'll talk about that. And ultimately, there are more and more Vs are getting added. One is called value, and there are so many other things. But ultimately, associated with that is the ability to how do you store data? How do you retrieve? How do you do it efficiently? 
then how do you process that data? So they're all associated challenges and there are solutions with it. Just giving a flavor of big data. Then these are all different nature of data. No? Like there is a text data, images, uh, then numerical data like stock prices or something, videos and speed signals. So variety of data. And you integrate or uh, deal with independently to solve different problems. So structured, unstructured, the other angle to that. Structured, unstructured. Like a, like a tabular data, or there is no way of structuring it. It's a free flow, like a free conversation, a free speech kind of. Now we get into uh, another important concept called um, uh, foundation models. These typical foundation models are like they are trained on large data sets and the tasks can be fine tuned to different downstream. So you have seen so far that originally when we built, when we suggesting that pattern features and classification, we are expecting data to be available, labels to be available. That means when a new problem is, when the new problem you come across, you need to get that label. You need to go to annotator and get the label. It's not practically possible. And you need to build model from scratch each time. No? So can you redo, can you repurpose some model that is built to solve a different problem? Can it be repurposed to solve some other problem? This is the underlying theme of uh, foundation models. It is trained on large data sets and tasks that are fine tuned for different downstream tasks. So again, there are two very important uh, uh, differences that you can go through. And uh, the another important point is all the foundation models thus far, but for recent developments, are open source. The code is available, the papers are available in, in an archive paper or a general paper. So one can take it that, take that up, and build a build a model on that to solve a different problem. So everything is used for development of science. And the amount of development that since 2015 or so, uh, 12 or so, was phenomenal. The kind of amount of the computer science that, and, and statistics, statistics developed by computer scientists was phenomenal. That kind of a development in a way is possible with a, because of the open source solutions. And uh, on foundation model, there is a very important paper by Pomasani and others. There are about 100 researchers. And who come who came together under uh, Stanford Institute for Human Centered Artificial Intelligence? This is a 200 page paper, and 100 researchers they have put together, and they have put together all the risks. You now, the title itself is like Opportunities and Risks of Foundation Models, and how, how they can solve. They have listed out all possible solutions there, and uh, also they stress on the importance of uh, you know, keeping them open uh, so that the science can continue to develop. For example, to be fair, uh, if somebody has invested huge money uh, in developing a particular solution, he wants return on investment, and they are doing business. Like it's not an academic institute; it's not a, it's not a uh, university where you uh, develop something and make it available to the community. So, when a commercial organization wants to exploit, uh, it's possibly fair for them not to make it open, but that also stops the, uh, you know, it it. Uh, makes it it's opaque in so many ways. We'll discuss more when, I, when we come to that topic. That's where the insistence that it has to remain open and science should continue to develop kind of a, a, a thing. Then the importance, again, is I talked about that. And it's as like, and somebody is like a question mark, deliberately have kept it as a question mark. Like, and people are saying that now it has shown the promise, the, the chat GPT, like, is it shift of training pattern or pattern paradigm? from each of their pre-trained foundation models to artificial general intelligence. The artificial general intelligence talks about, is it human-like? Like, you know, the, uh, is it like behaving like a human-like? Are we there already yet? Kind of a question mark. Is it like a open for discussion? We will we'll not get into that, but I want you to start thinking in those lines. You can read up more if you're interested. Okay. No, it, 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 is, it, it still relies on uh, the question is, uh, uh, is it like um, uh, instead of relying on empirical data, is it trying to do uh, slightly differently? Uh, it still depends on the original models. The foundation models are still depend, defined on, developed on empirical data. Only. So those models can be, can it be repurposed is one thing. Another thing is, when so many things are put together, no, it surprises us. No, when you, and whoever uses this particular solution, it surprises us in so many ways. It can summarize. It can, it can give a sentiment 
um, you know, analysis uh, of certain things. It can extract important characteristic of it. And you can, you can, it's imagine your imagination is a limit. Now, how do you explain the system? So from that sense, are we already there in the artificial general intelligence? Are we becoming like human like intelligence is already there? And on this note, there is a very interesting discussion by uh, Jeffrey Hinter. And maybe you can look at it in YouTube. There are many, many talks on that. And very philosophical and very uh, great person. You can, I mean, I made some notes if time permits tomorrow. I mean, I'll talk about that towards the end. So there are many, many such concepts, you know, like Farhan against he recently moved out of Google and he, that was against his conscience and he felt, I mean, have done it. I mean, he, that man is a Turing Award winner. He's almost like Nobel Prize equivalent uh, in computer science. So and there are concerns. I'll talk about those concerns when they come. The foundation dev models, you know, uh, they, they, they allow development of foundation models are like this. In NLP, that it started with, uh, this is again, I have taken from this particular paper, is a comprehensive survey. This is a very good uh, survey in case if some of you are interested. Comprehensive survey of pre-trained foundation models history from BERT to ChatGPT. It's a more recent, I think maybe this week or last week, or we just come, I think. And in script, skip grant, uh, where uh, there is like what to make models kind of a thing. And uh, then the glow, uh, you would have heard, no, like um, uh, examples like, um, uh, man, uh, king minus man is equal to uh, queen minus uh, uh, like woman kind of thing. That, that kind of thing. I mean, I'm not quite sure. those kind of solutions. So that from there, from there, glow, then contest exemplar, CNNs, deep walk, and uh, NLP, uh, the shade LSTM, fast text, NAT, and each of them are uh foundation models and they're all open source like bert and transformer becomes the the de facto uh lifeline for all the solutions now transformer models robert uh, gpt and uh, gpt2 is a forerunner for gpt3 and current chat gpt uh then the, the these are all some of the solutions this is computer vision space this is graph space cv is computer vision graph space and again NLP, again, GPT-3, again, a forerunner for that, but an equivalent solutions from different uh, uh, different uh, organizations. And then the next graphic will tell you which organization has contributed to what. Again, again in the graph, these are the models and unified uh, PTMs, like again, uh, pre-trained uh, models. Again, there are some of the other models. So, uh, I don't know where. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally, you should start somewhere. You should start with simple problem and try playing with it. I mean, reading is alone is not sufficient. Just have to maybe, as I said, there are open source solutions. You can download them. You can try doing that. You know? so then slowly you can add uh, more and more. That's how you learn. And uh, another one way of learning, uh, people say, is a, a, a textbook is better than uh, you know a blog or uh, a single paper. Like maybe a structured. When you want to start up with subject, it is good to start with a textbook. Where is a structured learning will be there. Chapter one is very. Like a very fundamentals, like maybe first a few chapters of fundamentals, then deeper, then deeper kind of thing. In the preface, you can also see if you are interested in this, maybe you can skip certain chapters and go to that chapter. The other, the other important thing I, I want to say that yeah, possibly it's not it's not possible uh, maybe to catch up everything that is happening in the world. So what you are interested in, that alone you can focus and try mastering it. Uh, there is a I quote uh, one great. Uh, 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 astronomer and uh, was also a uh, science fiction writer, science writer, like by name of Carl Sagan. The guy had a uh, good fortune to listen to him on the stage. Uh, in the this gentleman says that American Central Library has, he's an American, American Central Library has million books and hundreds of lifetimes are not sufficient to read up all that, although you are interested. So you need to choose what you want to do. So it's impossible and and stop feeling bad about that. It's not getting possible. Like focus on certain things, understand. Then you know that the moment you get into that and try understanding a certain aspect of it, 
you know that the rest of the things are similar. By the time you already have a, an abstraction about what is happening there, the rest of the things you can get a feel that, okay, it is an extension of that, is broadly that kind of thing. And supposing that is your bread and butter, supposing you are into data science and that is day in and out, you have to be solving those problems, then you might you might try out one or the other uh, to understand, and you to practice and get a feel about it. <coughs> Then comes the generative AI. So we'll go uh, again uh, slightly deeper. Uh, so far, the, the discussion is uh, we discussed about uh, the basic co concept of machine learning modeling, patterns, features, supervised learning, some examples of how we build models, then semi supervised, self supervised, unsupervised, and a bit on reinforcement learning. Then, how do we really build a model training, validation, and test data sets? And big data, it's a concept of big data. And how how it can be how how it has crept into our lives. No, you you cannot get out of that. Now you suddenly get a. And there is also no uh, people say that the clickbaits. So you have not been using something YouTube, and suddenly he he randomly he pushes you something, and you get excited and you get into that kind of thing. Like so, it's like recommendations, and you have gone visited and bought some thing on e-commerce site or maybe a fashion e-commerce site. You are you are buying behavior is shaped, you know, like uh, you you are enticed to buy again. Uh, uh, then, uh, as an organization, as a as an e-commerce company, it would have figured out what kind of person you are. Like, are you price price conscious? Are is, are you a window shopper? Or uh, how frequently you buy? When do you want replenish buy? You know, there are plenty of data science that crept into day in and day out in our lives. So. Then comes the generative AI. Like we discussed about that nature of data, different types of data, and some types I would have missed. There are mixed types, and some types I missed. It's a broad, uh, broad uh, landscape. Then the foundation models and generative AI. Now let us get into generative AI. This is the space. This is the thing, in a way, you know, uh, the happening thing uh, around us. Now I'll start with some examples. Now I'll come to large language models towards them. These are all kind of large language, multi-modal large language models, but I'll get into a bit of a little more theory. So you can see this is a screenshot I have taken. This is a generate way. There is a broad taxonomy of models in the following, like text to images. There are models like DALI to or image and or stable diffusion and muse. These are some of the models. Now, what I have done is I have gone to one of the websites. This is here, dpi.org in the bottom. And I clicked, uh, went to that, and I asked for laughing panda. And then you see that laughing panda there. So the what you, what you it shows is the original uh, one panda. Then I got laughing panda. Maybe I can ask for a crying panda. Uh, now I can ask for panda with the, uh, with the garland of uh, maybe roses. So it can generate that image, and it can uh, show it to you. And uh, this is uh, like uh, a, this, this problem is called text to images. Okay, they say, again, this is the classic example of multimodal solutions where text and images are together, they are used together. And this is a very good uh, uh, summary. Like this is chat GPT. This is in January 2000. As soon as chat GPT was announced, and there, is a, there is an archive paper on chat GPT is not all, all that you need. And this is the paper talks about uh, at least all these uh, broad uh, solutions here. And okay, then comes the next one, generative AI again, again, like text to 3D. And this is a dream 3D is a frog wearing a sweater. So this is the question asked. And it's a 3D model of frog wearing sweater. And you have a point. Uh, I mean, I thought of showing it, but then again, I don't know whether I'll be able to show during the part of the maybe we have to exit and redo that. But you can try out these other sites. And these couplets are taken from Dream Fusion. You can each of you can just log in and try the out. You can just say there, there's a control point where you can control, you can see all three sixty degree of the problem, all, all about that can. But it surprises us and it uh, it also like is it taking away, like for example, uh, you need to generate an artistic picture of something. And now is it possibly aiding you to do it faster? You don't have to imagine everything. And possibly you are only a very creative artist, like you are a Picasso, then possibly your job is getting affected. So this is an open question. Then we have to discuss. Then again, again, this is the image to text. Now there is a this is again I have taken from uh, these uh, bottom websites. Like the, there is a there is a plate full of some certain dish. Uh, the question is the ingredients of dish are. Then it says beef, potatoes, carrots, broccoli, and uh, lemon. 
and the other one is a CD cover of uh, Rosen. And the soundtrack includes it talks about Let It Go and for the first time in forever kind of thing. No, it, it is able to explain it well uh, on that. Then again, the, what what the curiosity in our mind is like: How is it able to generate? How are you training that model? How is it able to do that? The other bigger question, the sub question is: uh, Is it eating our stomach like kind of thing? No? So, are some of the people at least artists or some creative artists? Then, but you cannot run away. You cannot escape the development. You still be. Uh, you need to still embrace it, still adopt it, to make use of it. The other thing is your text to video. Again, video I haven't shown. I have taken few screenshots. Uh, this this video is uh, this rendition is Kinaki. Again, this website I went to in the bottom. Again, a teddy bear and the prompts that are given uh, are like teddy bear uh, diving into ocean and uh, teddy bear emerges from the water. It bears walks on the feature uh, on the beach. The camera zooms out the teddy bear in a camper. These instructions they are converted into an image, uh, like a video. This is the video. A teddy bear really jumps into the ocean, swims, then comes out, and it is walking on the beach. Uh, just a few screenshots I have taken, but you can try it out. You can try out different things of this. Then again, here again is a text to audio. Uh, again, a generative model. Uh, again, a bit big instructions are that are given to us, but I didn't uh, place the audio here again for the fear of whether I'll be able to play or not. But you can get to this side to get the whisper is a solution. You can try it out. Even this paper will give you the entire landscape. The like chat GPT is not all you need. That takes that gives you a landscape. Again, text to science. There is this is called uh, you know, Galactic or Minerva. These are the solutions. These, these are all open source solutions. Uh, the, the foundation models help to build this solution. This in turn is becomes a foundation. Like a typical uh, science related, maybe the distance between sun and moon, uh, uh, that, kind, that kind of thing. So, example, the, the, you see the question, no? like a reason, reason why transformers replaced RNNs, no? yeah, recurrent neural networks, are because is the query. And uh, the generated text is here. The reason why transformers replaced RNNs was because. You are able to capture long term dependencies in the input signal. Similarly, on attention mechanism, it says clearly the attention mechanism was introduced uh, uh, by neural machine translation by jointly learning to align and translate uh, to improve the performance of the uh, encoder decoder. So, this is what we have discussed so far. Text to text models. Now, now comes the text to text. That is what is, now we are all uh, the attention we have got is because of this. So, text to text models. Again, uh, there is a reference here survey of large language models. This is a very good thing. This is also more recent ones, more recent one. And uh, it is like it consists of two aspects. One is natural language understanding, natural language generation. Okay. Yeah, one concept I missed uh, saying is generation. No? So far, we talked about when we built uh, supervised learning models, what we are doing is they're predicting the label of a pattern, fish or water bottle or fish type one or type two. If you can generate the entire pattern itself, that means the entire feature set and a pattern, if you can, you can generate, that's called generative model. Okay? It's able to generate the pattern itself, not the label alone. Okay? And pattern is higher dimensional than a label. So that's the challenge there and is able to do all these generative models are able to do that. And uh, the NLU and NLU. You have learned how is it behaving. You you extract the patterns out over one day and can you generate new patterns? So all that is like that, you know, like a three-dimensional problem where you have seen that problem with sweater. Or maybe all that. There are all kind of new patterns are getting in. That's where they are for getting And this comes the text to text uh, language models, NLU, NLG. Uh, is a NLG has to be a function of NLU because unless it understands natural language, uh, whatever is spoken, natural language is something like uh, uh, can you tell me the traffic uh, in uh, AAAT Hyderabad Junction? Okay. So that's a natural language query, you know. Um, I'm having a headache. Can you suggest something? Okay, these are all natural language queries. So, like, there is no formal structure to that. It's a natural language query. Then you have to understand. Then it has to generate the answer. That's the point. And transforms uh, a sequence to text uh, 
sequence of text to another sequence and it was predicts the next word next word prediction it does and machine learning, machine translation text summarization dialogue systems are some examples of those uh, uh, text to text models and we have discussed so far our multimodal large language models earlier like as i said text plus video text plus audio text plus video uh, image kind of and uh, text to text chatbots are two types one is task oriented dialogue and there is open di domain dialogue systems task oriented is you have a specific task for example uh, you have bought a ticket uh, on particular airlines and uh, you want to know uh, you have you are you have mentioned that your gst on that you want to know whether i can get uh, invoice of that yeah? is a gst because the guy can be here or uh, i want to cancel my ticket uh, i want to know the process how to do that so you go to that site and you try to ask that question whether uh, it is able to understand your query and answer you effectively most sites so far you might have seen are like a faqs it will direct you there are only certain faqs including your car hiring cab services kind of companies they have only faqs they direct you to uh, those frozen things you know, maybe 10 different types of uh, queries you can ask those solutions it has anything other than it, it doesn't have sometimes if they are kind enough they'll ask you what other query you have and they may not act on that sometimes even they don't want to ask whereas an intelligent bot will be able to understand the query well and respond well one is that like test the task oriented like, like i was saying the ticket cancellation or certain things that are happening but other things may be open dialogue open domain dialogue systems uh, okay the other example is like it's like totally in the open like i just know that i have a headache kind of thing anything so these are all the uh, next generation solutions are on that level now let me talk about long view was the uh, generated package value is there any yeah there again kind of last functions there is a way to validate that they're, they're able to generate value there are ways of doing so we maintain the context of the conversation uh, that, that is the beauty of these models they are, they are able to maintain the context even if you shift a context and little later that's what chat uh, gpt know that everybody got surprised that you will shift the context after some time when you go back you say you 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 drift away from the context and you keep asking questions and come back and able to meet again that's a standard expectation of a platform and it's able to do much better and there are other systems other solutions that are not able to do that but this is able to do much better there is some proprietary kind of knowledge base that's so how can we customize that is the point the point is that so when there is there are you not sharing it uh, can should not science get ever for that okay. but it's not that uh, that can't be done for example all the major companies right, like when this particular company has brought it out this solution each other companies are equally capable of doing that and there are parallel solutions i'll go there a little later there is a graphic that shows there are parallel solutions by other companies but certain people for their own like each are each are all corporations each are they have their own profit motives but they have their own um, priorities why they have not done for this kind of solution but they have shown through examples that they can create those solutions and uh, and then uh, uh, they are capable of doing solutions and they are also talking about we are making it open but we are not giving it closed so one is like what is apparent what is between the lines kind of thing but Whatever this, whatever is apparent to us, uh, I will try to present that. So these are all like natural language processing helps deriving meaningful, actionable data from daily written text, which is natural language in any language, not necessarily English, any language in the world. So these are some of the topics that come across from is a word cloud, uh, where you some of the topics are like uh, uh, text processing, uh, like uh, translate, natural translation, information uh, processing. Uh, learning from data. So these are all some of the uh, frequently appearing words in this topic. A statistical machine learning. Yeah. The natural language processing applications uh, are uh, following, and many more. I mean, I have many more applications in the uh, in the appendix. Uh, if time permits, I'll go there. Otherwise, broadly, there are because this particular uh, workload allows me only ten topics to mention, so I just chose ten topics. But there are many more. I mean, like text image generation, natural language understanding, question answering, dialogue management, 
and text to video generation, grammar correction, natural language generation, machine translation, and text summarization. So each of them, uh, for example, let me take about uh, talk about question answer. For example, we we have a paragraph. We have a paragraph. And if we that we have a model, a model should be able to, I can ask any question of that and it will be able to answer. For example, uh, on a foundation model, you know, like I'm, I'm beauty and personal care. Uh, I'm trying to say there, there is a write up on that particular brand's foundation models. Now I'm, you can ask questions. This for, for my skin type, which is the right foundation model. So then it's an expression of what is your skin type? Are you pale, medium, or dark? Then I would say something. Then it will respond it with possibly this is a foundation type A, B, whatever. So this that kind of a conversation. Okay, that all those questions I is able to answer them. So that is a like again that works are better systems. This is kind of evolution of language models that help solving NLP tasks, statistical language models around 90s. The neural uh, language models like RNN and uh, distributed representation of words, word to make, etc. Then pre trained language models like ELMO, LSTM, by LSTM, BERT, GPT2, BART, and LLMs that scale PLMs leading to emerging abilities. So, another beauty uh, of uh, large language models large language models is always characterized as massive data. It is learning on massive. I, I have another graphic on how much data it brings on. On that data, when it tries to do that, beyond the intended function, there are other abilities that come up, that show up. That's called emergent abilities or emerging abilities, which is surprises even the, even the person originally when, when he started building the system. That was not intended, but most of them are beautiful properties, but we don't know what other properties come up. There are emergent properties. So these are all uh, some of the, uh, uh, sorry. Okay. okay. So these are some of the about 2017, around 17, there is a transfer mode model. And then these are all the uh, journey, you know, like you can see that Google T5 in 2019, OpenAI GPT-3 in 2020, again, uh, G Shot Google, Google MT5 around the same time. Then 2021, see that the amount number of developers that have happened between 2021 and 22. 22 and 23 and 23 so far. You just see the number of models that come up. And there are many more. No, yesterday when we yesterday there was a release on what is called Lima. I will talk about that in a brief. So these are all things, you no, know, like open a different companies. So this is a Chinese company. So these are all different models that have come. Instant GPT is again a forerunner for uh, uh, the chat GPT, code gen, then opt gpt track and string so likewise there are so many models that have got developed and when this chat gpt got released around this time um yeah here okay here around this time around december time november december time when this got developed and you can see that color code no? this color code is publicly available all these models are publicly available both in terms of text and uh, solutions and these things are not publicly available. GPT-3, GPT. Right? So, broad landscape. Then comes the various uh, ratios of uh, data sources in the pre-training data. What is it trained on? A particular model, T5, is predominantly trained on this web pages. MT5, again, web pages. Lima, combination of all these conversation data, books, news, scientific data, code. And what percentages of what? Like alpha code is completely trained on code data. So likewise, different models, how are they developing different things? Again, this graphic is taken from this bottom, this, uh, this reference. Uh, okay. Not able to remove that. Okay. Typically, multilingual models are, uh, they need a lot of massive corpus of data, corpus of data. And developing uh, large scale generative models, it, uh, again, in addition to data compute, skilled data scientists and data engineers. So, when you look at ChatGPT, it is also engineering model, the way they, they were able to put together as a solution. And it is uh, stable and it is able to do, and they will be continuously on track. No? When 
when you raise certain points, when you say some concerns, they keep working in the background, they keep waiting in a stable product, product solution. So these are all things that are required. And these are only because of this reason. And as you compute this, work, because of these reasons, in the world over, there are hardly a handful of companies who are capable of doing it. And some of us, we can't even touch. Small is we have to think of able to build that, but we can make use of that if they're in open source and start building solutions of that. So some of those people who are able to do that, OpenAI, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, Google Research, DeepMind, Meta AI, Rambi, university groups, some university industry collaboration groups. So these are all only people who create, uh, you know, maybe six, maybe 10, that what they like. So those are the, that is the kind of scale that is required to solve to develop these problems, solutions. And coming to ChatGPT, ChatGPT is a suite of models. It's not a single model that does natural language. Again, it's a guess. Like uh, there's no public, not many, maybe I'm not exposed, but not many things that you won't know, be. But it's like a multiple models that work together, yeah, both that does both NLU and NLG. It combines supervised learning with reinforcement learning. And some of the applications are like education, like as you see that. Can you set a syllabus for a VTEC? Uh, for a university, for a, what should be the first year, I mean, like, it's proper proper information on that. That to, can you summarize the concept for you? education, game, as I said, multi multimodal solutions, you have said, game, media, advertising, movie, music, painting, code development, phone apps, features, like your imagination, you can have plenty of applications there. Then, uh, like many other large language models, it displays interesting emergent behavior that we, I talked about earlier. Uh, the other advantages are, uh, sorry, for that. Okay. these are all uh, training data sizes and parameters. Like typically, uh, parameter, you can say as a if it's a neural network, weights maybe the parameters. Or uh, another simple example, normally I say, for example, easiest way, way to understand in a numerical sense is imagine you have a cloud data, cloud of data, cloud of data means there's a uh, randomly plotted points in your data, and there's a shape in the data. And if you can put a second degree equation, so this one AX square plus BX plus C, so A, B, C are parameters of the computation, three parameters. Now, in term, again, if you fit a neural network, possibly maybe 10 parameters, 10 waves, maybe 12 waves or 15 waves, you'll be able to predict that. Now, imagine those kind of parameters are 350 million in case of BERT. In the training data that is using 3.3 billion tokens. GPT-2 token is a world in, in, in test. So, OGPT-2, 10 billion token, uh, data size and 1.5 billion parameters. GPT-3, 300 billion uh, tokens and one, 175 billion parameters. Then GPT-3 should have, should be greater than 175 billion, not known, unknown. Uh, GPT-4, unknown, should be around of the order of trillion parameters. And uh, Lambda, Google, again, around 2020, 1.5 trillion uh, data size and 65 billion parameters. And Llama, again, 1.4 trillion uh, data size, 65 billion parameters. Palm 2, Again, uh, which were much more recent, 3.5 trillion uh, tokens and 340 billion parameters. Pump two is mostly is more recent one. So these are the, this is the kind of massive scale of that model. So and the compute uh, is not easily available. We, we can't even imagine that. And skill also is required. No? Not everybody can do it. They're coming to the advantages like it can be should be seen as a tool. It improves productivity. Uh, it can it generates human like conversations. All this, all of you must have seen that. And it should innovate to exploit its full potential. Like uh, I will give you some examples. Maybe type of a student center and show that. And uh, prompt engineering is the key. Through how do you really say a particular thing? No, you you for example you give me details of. Uh, Mahindra cars of 1000 cc. Uh, if I look at 1000 cc and it will give all brands. So I, I can restrict that you give me only certain brand of say Mahindra cars or maybe or maybe business paint. Don't talk about anything else. That kind of restrictions you can give to get the desired result. So then again, 
Yeah, there is also what is called. Uh, I'll talk about some of the concepts. I'll I'll, I'll explain it there. So it can it can explain things. It can give suggestions. For example, I'm going to. I need to crawl a website, um, social media site. Can you help me to give the code? It will give, give you the directions. First of all, it warns you that uh, it is not possible. You should do that because there are they have their own rules. So you should be able to do that. Should you should not ideally do. But however. These are the directions typically that would be. These are the components of doing that. And explanation, rational generation. There is a very interesting thing that is often very recently that we have seen is uh, can you use these massive models that code may not be available? Can you use massive data sets to generate rational for a particular thing? For example, uh, you have labeled, you have you have labeled certain things in a particular way, you know, for example, club you know, that you put both like. What is it related to? Is it cricket or football or sports? It's sports because can you give me the reasoning? Why, why do you say it's sports? Then it gives a reason. Can that reasoning can be a training data set for building a model? So that's called uh, rational generation chain of measuring. These models are much smaller and perform much better than these large language. They have shown that. They have recent papers um, that talk about that. There are many tasks beyond natural language generation. Uh, that do, and uh, you can also see, you know, like uh, when uh, Sam Altman, CEO of uh, OpenAI, there is a testimony in US Senate. If you're not looking at it, you can look at it in YouTube. And he clearly says if something has to go back, it, it can go back very well, definitely. Yes, it's true that it can go back. So while it can go back, it can be dangerous, but you can be exploiting that uh, to improve your productivity. So whatever you do in a mundane things can be improved through productivity improvement. So concerns are like, is it draft transitioning and transformation of creation is happening? That has been happening all through. If you carefully see even 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there was like banks nationalization, computerization. There was a lot of all unions were striking against. So draft transitioning may happen. Some jobs, what you have been conventionally doing, maybe you can do much more efficiently. Maybe new jobs will open up. And if this technology, that's what Sam Altman is saying, if technology can go wrong, it can go quite wrong. That's what Sam Altman says. And consistency of response. There are some challenges that uh, uh, when, you, when it says, uh, when he asks you to suggest something, you may suggest there is a stochasticity involved in that. And uh, that's the one concern. But it can be controlled through some parameters. Like there are certain parameters we'll talk about, like maybe something like temperature control, top is something. Like to that, you can control the randomness of your response. And the lack of accuracy guarantees, unlike custom built models, when we build a model, like fish versus water, when we build a model and when we test it out, now I'm confident that if future data is also like fish and water only are coming as a conveyor belt, and the distribution, the probability distribution of training data and the test unseen data is similar, then I can tell you that my accuracy is this. It could be 95% time and second. Those guarantees are always given. Then are they given here? Or we have to derive that. See, but when they have built a, they have built a massive system, they would have taken care of all that. But are they coming? So can I put this system into a, a, a operational chain and decisions made by that can I put into action? So at least at the moment we are still learning. It's not clear that is it available, that kind of thing. So I could be wrong. Then uh, lack of accuracy guarantee, like in hallucinations at times, like hallucinations, like uh, uh, some random, random random thing that comes suddenly in between and it latches somewhere. It can be uh, uh, like uh, sales of work will come to. So it, that may not be correct, but it has come there somehow. Possibly emergent behavior, that those kind of things do happen. The dangers of uh, wrong exploitation, supposing, can I use it for? Uh, uh, cracking a website or uh, maybe uh, hacking a thing. Mm -hmm. So, is it possible? The lack of uh, open source and privacy concerns. Unverified. But, like, for example, I give some data, I expose my company's data, and all my employees are in data, and ask them, I want to give them benefits. Uh, uh, can you suggest the ways to give benefits? If I give, if I suggest something, but then uh, is this data is getting into really training the model? And will it surface in an implicit way somewhere else? But there will be guarantees the, the, the solutions will give. But those are all concerns inherent. And you need to understand that maybe be sensitive to that when you try to expose that. 
but there will be they take care you know, massive corporations they know that concerns so they might hopefully take care recent developments are more large scale models they keep coming day in and day out and uh, industry is moving towards exploiting this you can you would have seen since last 6 months or 5 4 5 months every major it industry in the country have said that we are going to exploit that and they have put the team into uh, training that team in understanding this uh, chat gpt and exploiting that every major it industry in the company you know, like every, the it industry gives us a lot of jobs so like every street you have somebody who is working in one of those major it companies so they have they are going towards that there is a craving for that and they want to exploit it fully and there may be companies who are in, who insist that you need to use you can solve that but you need to use chat gpt to solve this particular problem brainstorming and limitations are continuing continue to happen and focus on importance of open source models is again again raising it like the way i have said earlier the stanford university group that that is insisting focus on development like for example everyone like you take look at meta or google they release solutions and they proudly say that these solutions are in the open please try using that but there is also a news that it is possible that an x model is uh may not be always known like sooner or later they have to join the bandwagon because they're all commercial organizations they are working for profit so we need to watch out how, how are they going to happen now the other thing as i said they are now there is a focus on developing efficient models that exploit large scale models. how do you build smaller models focus models which is as accurate as that that, that has been always the game in computer science but that is again that is on the go i think i gave some references here for some reason not able to see it here there's a, there are I, I have given the references also there are publications in that range in that area then comes the latest i i'll take about 10 minutes i think we are slightly overshooting the time i'll just turn, take a minute this, this is a major uh, topic no like for example is it that the data science problems are in the industry now with this gpt is it getting affected are we doing things in the right way or is there any better way of uh, so i mean like is it taking away your jobs sir? is data science still relevant no so let me talk about how typical data science problems come in day to day life so some are like like it is maybe a warehouse uh, and there are gaps that have to be filled that items are not filled or it can be it can be a shopping shop floor uh, not shop floor uh, like a uh, a, mo a mall of a shopping area of a mall like different racks are there certain you 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 need that the toothpaste thing become as uh, empty we need to fill it instead of sending a man can you use computer vision based solution which says that yeah these racks are fully free they are vacant then you need to fill up you know, that, that can it happen automatically can it happen in multiple times in a day and which will take the video and you can generate solutions on that and maybe in the conveyor belt there is an item that is uh, getting packed is it possible that something the packet is full it is sealed but the the maybe some toy which is supposed to be there inside is not there is there another solution then then comes the uh, the actual recognition they, 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 these people may be packing shoes in a, in a warehouse so if they are doing it that way like uh, are they checking the things properly there is action recognition action one action two action three action four action five these five actions are they doing it properly is a computer vision problem are uh, like uh, these are all cookies are they baked properly uh, well baked medium baked unbaked they can you classify them then can you summarize it in this match so it is john mckenroe he is uh, playing forehand shot like can you analyze a particular game of a particular person uh, is it uh, can you summarize the game how many times he had double faulted how many times is is this were there how many times he had that back back and forehand can then is a mexican wave in a football match possibly there is an event that something has happened there is because everybody raised it that it should be a what is it playful mexican waves that keep happening at the game but when everybody raised and stood and making shouting maybe there is a goal scored goal missed something like that and this is called anomaly detection there is a there is a capsule here there, there is some item and this is the anomaly here the anomaly is over it and here it, it can be seen much this is a capsule medicine chemical capsule there is an anomaly here and this is a simple clock and there is a hole here and if you this is a zoomed part of that this is an anomaly so these are some of the problems you no know, day in and day out you get and uh, similarly in e-commerce supply chain personal recommendations catalog hygiene optimal pricing design generation likewise you know, there are plenty like 100 problems i can talk about but typically i have 
given some few examples. So, are these models soluble by any of these solutions? Foundation models, yes. But ChatGPT alone, maybe. Maybe some text related, LP related images, they pick it up. But the multimodal solution can help creating new uh, things. But when the client comes to us, for example, massive data sets, uh, insights for business advantage, large graphs, many hidden patterns, that is, data is there, the patterns you have to identify. Customer experience in intelligent reactions, conversation, like, multilingual conversations. Kind of. So, in most of the times, its problem is very vaguely different. Whether you work in a product company or a service company, the problem is the client comes with a vague problem. I have data collected for the last five years. Can you figure out what you can do about it? So you tell us what is painful to you. No, you figure out. Then you need to understand, you need to put yourself into his shoes, try to understand his problem, and try to go through the data, create those insights, show it to them that these are the things. Then they would have realized, see, business people are having great equipment. They understand the business, their business well. But still, they would have missed some patterns. Then these patterns, they surprise them. They predict the certain patterns and try to excite them to solve or keep working on those problems. So likewise, there will be uh, each of those problems are unseen, vague, ill-defined. Then will any of these things, if you don't put the prompt properly, will it give you the solution? And will it give that you do the data analysis possibly? Later it might come. But there are problems that has to be solved then and there in the first principles thinking. So the data science, like most industries, have domain-specific problems, limited resources for commercial solutions. For example, they don't want to use it. Each is commercial. There is a cost involved in that when you use a commercial solution. Then many people say that I don't want to keep the data on the cloud. I have a local setup. I can give you GPU. You solve the problem, and it has to be local everything. Land kind of thing. Locally, I can't put it in public. Kind of then we need to solve those problems in a particular way, and need first principles thinking in formulating the problems because most of them are vague problems. Task specific solutions or commercial solutions in the past involved about that. And the challenges of data scientists like vague business problems to formal management. I can give a lot of examples, but I think we are kind of out of time. Is this is what we have discussed so far. For your official learning, foundation models, generative AI solutions using large language models, how generative AI solutions are inflation problem solving. And uh, most industries look for automating mundane tasks. It could be as simple as a bank looking for, uh, there are a lot of slips that go on, no? like, uh, like things are automated now, but then still there are manually scribbled notes. Can you automate that? Can you do the handwritten recognition and automate everything that is happening? That kind of mundane tasks you day in and day out, you get into. How do you solve those problems? And adoption of multi foundation models have already been happening, it should continue happening there. And uh, yeah, broadly that. Uh, so this is these are all uh, some of the publications, like research publications, deeper thing, and you can keep, have a look at that. I'll keep it for some time so that you can register and it gets recorded in YouTube. And LLMs, some prompt engineering and plugins. And books. If you wanted to understand uh, deeper and you want to get them, then blogs and posts uh, on uh, different topics. So, broadly, uh, this is the one, and uh, I think the feedback thing has not come. There's any, I think, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Maybe it has to be refreshed. I have kept it there. I think it needs to be. Yeah, ah, it is there. It is there. We have also arranged for time. And then there's an opportunity to network. Ah, this, this, this is the one. Just have snaps and go in and then uh, if you want to push by a stomach, then we can do that too. So, yeah, this is the uh, feedback link. Thank you so much. Any, any questions? I'm still open. Yes, yeah. yeah. so there is something in there. So, yeah, there is nothing wrong with you. But right now, I, I don't know. I'm running. So, I don't, I don't know what I want. So, kind of, it will be able to, uh, kind of like, Suggest me, isn't what you're looking for? 
Maybe you can ask that question. I want this answer. Can you suggest how should I give the prompt? Yes, maybe he has seen a lot of parameters. So these are the experiments. So this is a this is a product review. This is about uh, uh, I got this uh, panda plush toy from my from my daughter's birthday. If you, who loves it, takes it everywhere. It's a soft and super cute, and its face has this done by my colleague uh, Suman uh, of my team. And it is soft and super cute, and its face has a friendly look. It's a bit small for what I paid through. We paid though. I think uh, there might be other options that are bigger for the same price. It arrived a day earlier than expected. So I got to play with it myself before I gave it to her. It's so cute that I played it myself. Now on this text, you know, now we see the questions that are asked. Like I'm asking, they, can you generate, your task is to generate a short summary of the product review from an e-commerce site. Summary is the review below, delimited by people clicks. Anyway. So the, the, the summary is a soft, cute, panda plush toy loved by my daughter, but a bit small for the price, arrived early. My next query on that is, like, uh, uh, summary is, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Okay, with the product, uh, one specific aspect, we some reasons. Oh, I think I have to click somewhere. So now it is asking for a uh, focus on uh, a specific thing. You know, you only asking instead of so, uh, sorry, I got it. So summarize with a focus on the price and value. And it says it is soft, cute, and loud by recipient, but the price may be too high. The price per price aspect has come. And uh, supposing somebody is with a focus on shipping and delivery, it says arrived a day earlier than expected, but customer felt it was a bit small for the price. So likewise, now I'm asking it to extract instead of summarize. So extract keywords. Then I'm also saying how, how should it extract? So the, the product arrived uh, a day earlier than expected. Then I'm asking to give the sentiment. Now, another, another product, another product, like a lamp thing. Now I'm asking, there's a lamp, similar review, as a good lamp is purchased. Now question is, what is the sentiment? The sentiment of the review is positive. You can see it there, the sentiment of the review is positive. And then this time is asking, identify emotions expressed by the user express. For that query, happy, satisfied, grateful, interested, content. So that they don't occur in the original text. Okay. So, I mean, is the customer is expressing anger? Response is no. And uh, extract product and company name from the customer reviews item in a specific format also. So, I'll ask this specific format you give it to me, like identify the following item of the review, item purchased in this. The format should be JSON object. You know. Then it says lamp and Lumina. So, likewise, so your imagination is the limit. How do you really get the best out of that? There is a different review on different aspect. That, that. That is there, but possibly you can seek that kind of uh, suggestion as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can seek suggestion also on that. But there are documents. I mean, I have also given. Based on whatever it text and text. It gives some other thing. It gives links. It gives this yeah, summary. It gives completely. 
So we should be able to experiment. See, these are some of the documents that are available. Like, like how we have the LLM prompt fix for programming, basics of prompting, LLM motion. So these, you can look at that. You can read that. Yes. Maybe that helps you. Maybe we have to go Try it out. Yeah. Try it out. I can use it, but I will just see. Anyway, this, you, you know, the Google says that it's coming in the other. Whether it's if you use the prompt or not, then we can use it. Yeah. Any other questions? I have a question of some. Like, is this uh, this big data set? Is it these are built by only some of the companies that you have to only they are capable of doing it? And is there anything in India that the companies that are capable of doing, like doing this kind of thing? Or, uh, like it will become like monopoly, like sometimes it can lead to but like all these other said, you no, know, like a handful of companies, each of them are capable of solving in an equal solution, they can bring an equal solution. But for a specific task, I mean, they are in the open because or you can reuse uh, those open source solutions to solve a particular problem that you, you have on, on hand, but otherwise, yes, it's going to be monopoly. That's the reason the, the competing companies are also coming with value solutions. So far, they have always made it open source. They will make it commercial. So, who is doing it? But most of them are from America. Yeah. But other than all universities, Indian universities, IITs, uh, IITs, and all these great uh, universities, there is a lot of research, but not as a solution of that scale. That may not happen because there's no commercial language to that. And most of these universities within India, IIS, IITs, all these people, they, they, the idea is to not not necessarily not restricted to this. I mean, we can say something other universities are also capable. So their intent is only to improve the science, uh, expand the science, and that kind of thing. But as a product, they may not be interested in developing. But as a solution, there may be multiple solutions, publications, maybe they may be focused on different aspects of that. Something that can be the standard of business for the money, money, data, mm -hmm. computing, uh, computing. that uh, they, they should have. Well, they, they we have a commercial angle to that solution. Yeah, no, we are there. See, that's what no, there is. In fact, uh, the other day, same yesterday, previous news only, I think, in uh, Economic Times, there is a quote by uh, Microsoft Chief. Uh, who is talking about uh, one solution, which is which is based on ChatGPT? They built a chatbot. Not getting the name on top of my mind. Uh, where it was asking for uh, scholarship opportunities for a for a kid, uh, like ten past kid, uh, who was asking that what are the scholarship opportunities for my higher education? It was able to answer. Not able to get the name. It's a government supported kind of bot, which is built. I don't know which university also was involved in that. So we are capable. We have the technology. Each of the companies, even we use those foundation models. We are all capable of understanding how is it done. We can do that also. But should we do that? Is it the main objective of any university to do that? So will they ever make a product? Making a product is a different game. Yeah. Not all of us, not everybody can do it. But is the intent that? The intent is when it's only expanding the science, may not be that may not be a very interest. But capability is there. The great there are great uh, academicians, researchers in India who are equally capable of doing that. How can our gender is not go party uh, Yeah, even if you want to use that massive solution, you need to have enough resources to do that. But participation by me, understanding, you can always understand by by trying. This is that's what a recent solution I was talking about from the last couple of few weeks. There are a lot of small uh, size solutions, maybe I can. 
go to their papers also. Uh, for example, this one, no? how small can a language model be and speak uh, coherence in English? No? This is yesterday's paper. So there are other papers like that, like uh, for example, again, there are models that are coming with uh, a small scale, which, which can solve problems as the process. But imagine a bird node, which became a back, backbone kind of a model, that itself is uh, trained on a 30 billion parameters to get a token system. That is usually all of us. Right? We have solved so many problems here. Yeah. Actually, this interestingly, this problem is right, based on stable diffusion. It is a unsupervised directory. Like there is no label labels required. They're totally unsupervised. And uh, but there's a class imbalance problem in the standard problems. There are many ways of solving the class imbalance problems. Uh, uh, there are multiple approaches already available in research. That is true. For most of the things, it's like that. Or normally, in terms of cancer and cancer detection, there are a number of such images are very few. And the other data is very huge. There are ways of handling uh, imbalance. So we can discuss. Uh, any other thing? We talk about like foundation models, but they are practically reused. So, do we have to just use them like as a black box, just like input samples, or can we fuse them with the and change them according to our needs? They are doing that. For example, when I said originally there was one other slide I was talking about, there is a model that was um, repurposing that model. Right? We found it for the very idea is that right? that's what learned. you have already built a model for a virtual purpose. Can you? Use certain layers and solve that problem. The rest of the layers, you do it in, in your work. There are problems. Yeah, I discuss. Thank you so much. I think. Uh, I mean, yeah. one, on the scale of information model in this one, where, was, where are these tools? Like? So uh, let me talk, define those, those words. Data, I, I, I define. The data that whatever is there, the raw data is data. Data uh, from data you extract information. From information you generate knowledge. So from that sense, uh, the, this is a classic example. Right? This is massive data that it has it has learned from, and trying to make sense of that, and trying to whatever solution that is giving is giving knowledge. Right? Does it make sense? Whatever charity. Yeah. So it's just you know the knowledge. Uh, that's we get we cannot predict any wisdom of as of now. Can you give an example of what it is? So uh, everything what we do is uh take the knowledge like whatever we are studying, this is our knowledge that we have. But right now what human beings or AGI probably in the future has has ability to have wisdom on the uh, our implementation on something, on whatever knowledge you have learned there. You have you can implement that is the human uh, it's done now. Like, these are applications are already done for different aspects that is already done. Mm -hmm. When you're able to summarize the document, is they kind of uh, bringing the it's is it uh, that's why I'm asking, is it still that at the knowledge level or is it going towards the wisdom level? When you can extract uh, abstract things better, then possibly the wisdom is there already. But then, is there a bias? You know, the other thing that I, I discuss is is there a bias? The data that is trained on, if it has inherent bias, for example, that's what the other nodes I have not discussed, maybe uh, that's from the different terms of, for example, uh, the models uh, in a large language model, it's not necessarily a particular brand model, like possible. large language model, suppose you trained on crime novels and it has internalized uh, the, the criminal mind of a, of a villain of that crime novel. Now, now you are asking it to how to commit a particular crime, how to kill a particular person, how to burgle some uh, bank. It may give an innovative suggestion of burgling a bank. So that's the fear. 
is it that kind of a knowledge and wisdom is useful to the humanity or not useful? That's the fear. All these researchers, all these philosophers, researchers worry is that. Are you taking the the barrier they are putting words around it. They do that. They do their best, but it still creeps. I mean, yeah, but is it is it like intentional? Like for example, it's the country which is holding that right? that they have almost all the power to make those barriers. Like country like us, I have, because I have also seen the anomalies inside the world while working with it. Like we see, there is no. Uh, Lexicon of Telugu at all. Like it doesn't like, understand Telugu first of all, but it doesn't understand the uh, lexicon as well. Like it, even if we translate it into English, and it doesn't understand the proper lexicon. I think this can do multilingual model. Telugu is right, but in multilingual model is there. But there are a lot of solutions for Telugu language also. There are multilingual model. Our own company we have research about it. Our multilingual solutions are there. Like there are some models that from Dr. Kartika, I believe she she has worked on. Training a model and several languages, we did work on untrained languages. Some of the languages, that's kind of thing. Sure. I tell you, fine tune a new language, the short, small set of data, not a huge data. Those kind of solutions. Like, created by the Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the fear is that may not be intentional, but like an emergent behavior. I, I, I want to be suggested. There, there, there is a danger, no? for example, there are plenty of old movies, so like I know, there are supposing when it goes wrong, that is a whole worry. The worry is about when things go wrong, then how do you really control it? The intention may not be that, but it may be an emergent behavior in the solution. So those are the fears, those fears are there. That is where these people like Jeffrey Hinton, those people may raise their concerns for it. I hope they can maybe do it after that. So, how do they verify that? Like, how I have, but there are ways. No? They, they, they say that, for example, they warn you, not, for example, they said when I talked about uh, crawling aside, they warn you, sorry, you can't do that. They have their own uh, thing. No? They, they, there are guardrails being followed. But the worry is when it sneaks those guardrails and do something else, what is the issue? That's the issue. Is, is this guardrail a problem for a country like uh, the country which controls and country which doesn't control? Uh, as a solution, they control, but I don't know whether country specific rogue activity somebody would do. I, I don't think they do that. Our worry is when it sneaks through, when the controls are not good enough. See, the other beautiful way of saying that is like when a large language model works, it's like multiple copies of human. So I'm quoting Japan. The multiple copies of your work. When you try solving problem, your own brain is working. Right? That millions of copies of you are working, then the solution is that put together. Okay. So those are the some of those challenges and worries <laughs> that all the uh, philosophy philosophers and the senior scientists are worried about. Yeah, how how are you how is the how are you different? So yeah, in case if you can make kind of like yeah, short and advanced interpreting kind of that 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 itself answer actually. Yeah, it was see I in fact I didn't explain that thing, psychopathy best by us. Like when you ask a question, uh, it will try to please you. Oh, possibly, yeah, I am wrong, maybe you're right, kind of thing. Because human feedback is more. So those first question. You're trying to like I was created to but can anybody use use using chat as something? It's at the same time. It can create social environment kind of. Yeah. For example, can you suggest to uh, tell me how to hack a system? When you ask that in a point blank way, may say no. But how people have hacked the system? It's a response. <laughs> so, so that's a that's a change. No? That's a challenge there. So we are going to be having, uh, we have one session almost every month. Um, so, uh, 